Hi everyone, Jayma Malmi here and welcome to another scrapbooking video. Today is not so much a process video as a revamp or giving a facelift to this layout that you see here. So I created this layout a few years ago when we went camping. We don't camp often, but I used a kit to create this because I didn't really have any camping themed uh, embellishments or stamps back then. But I just got this S'more Adventures stamp set from Close to My Heart. It is in the new July, August, September catalog. And I think it's so cute that I wanted to add some of these icons and images to this layout without completely redoing it. So I also have a pocket page insert here. And so this just goes right in the middle of my layout in the album and I was able to fill it up with eight more photos. You can think of this as like pocket scrapbooking and you can fill it up with all photos like I did because I had a bunch of them but didn't wanna do more than a two page layout or you could fill it up with part photos and part uh, like scrap of paper or pocket cards. So I might add some icons to this as well. As you can see, I decorated it. I just added a few little stickers and I like to do that right on top of the page protector sometimes. So um, that's how those were added. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and figure out what I want to add here. So I know I want the tent because this is the only time we have been tent camping want to do it again, but um, I definitely want to use a tent since I can. I love these mountains. So the mountains don't have a stamp. It's just this die right here. I, this is a sample that I had cut. So I think I want to stamp that and I pulled out some cardstock here and trying to decide what colors I want to cut everything out in. And I'm thinking that I want the mountains to be in gray. So let's kind of dry fit it with this. I could put them here and cover the date and then I can write the date over again or put it somewhere else. And I also have this space over here. It kind of looks like it was made to have this here. So I might do that and then maybe add the mountains over here as well. I might cut it a couple of times, maybe kind of overlapping like that would be cute. So the color theme I have going here, oh, there's another dog hair, always dog hair is on my stuff. Um, I have the color theme here that the kit uh, had, and that was yellow, red, and navy, and some gray. And that works well with my photos, but I don't necessarily have to stick with this. I do like this red here, because that kind of draws your eye across to all of these red pieces here. So I do like having that over here as kind of an anchor. I might leave that. I might redo this because this was just like a sticker and it blends right into the background there. So I might switch that out. Um, I've got these trees on here. And by the way, if you see blue, that means it has a dye. There's a coordinating dye set that goes with the stamp set. If you're not familiar with Close to My Heart stamps, they come in an envelope already and they come on this carrier sheet so it's nice and handy and if you have a die set it comes right in there too and it comes on a magnet so i've got all my dies right here on magnets so anyways i'm thinking that i might want to stamp the tree i don't have any green embellishments though there is a little bit of green in the photos in the background, this was in Oregon, so there's lots of pine trees and green in the background. So I've pulled this, this is New England Ivy, which is a retiring color, but I'm thinking that the light side, I might be able to get away with adding a little bit of green here and there on the bottom and introducing that color, maybe even add it up here. And then we've got all these little icons, the flashlight, which is perfect for the nighttime photos the bonfire and extra logs and lantern and moon. I think I'm just gonna stamp everything and then see where they will fit on my layout. I'm gonna stamp the tree on green, so green on green. I think I'm gonna cut the mountains in the gray. We'll have a couple of gray mountains and that draws this gray title down here as well. Um, and then the rest of them, I'm just gonna stamp on white and then I'll color them in to fit where I'm gonna put them. 
So let's just go ahead and get to work. I'm pulling in one Versa mat. Typically, I would do my layout on the two Versa mats, but I'm turning the Versa mat over because there is a foamy surface that's perfect for stamping. So this little piece of foam comes in every stamp set, and if you don't have a Versa mat, you can use that piece of foam to stamp on, and it helps give a little bit of cushion when you stamp to get a better impression. Since I haven't used these stamps yet, I'm seasoning them by rubbing them or patting them on my hand to get any manufacturing oils and residue that's left. And then I will simply pat it on my stamp pad and stamp it onto my paper. So again, this is the light side of the cardstock. All of Close to My Heart's cardstock is two-sided. There's a full strength shade on one side and the back is a lighter shade of that same color. So it's really handy, it's like two in one. So I'm going to also stamp this tent. And I was thinking I was gonna stamp it on the white cardstock, but I actually decided to stamp that on the sapphire cardstock as well. So this piece of cardstock was in my scrap bin and it's one of the older cardstocks that was not two-sided. So this is the dark full strength on both sides. And once I stamped it, I realized it really just didn't stand out enough. So I grabbed a new piece of cardstock, turned it to the light side. Do you see what I did right there? I used the wrong ink pad, but I didn't realize it at the time. You'll see in just a little bit when I do realize it though. So I'm just kind of cutting that off and I'll set it along with the other stamped images. And then for the rest of the icons, I'm using my little mini Misty and I have a six by four piece of cardstock in there and that's so that I can stamp them all at once. And since I'm gonna be using my alcohol markers to color these in, I'm using the intense black ink. That is a black ink that is safe to use with alcohol markers and it's also waterproof so you can use it with watercolors or any other mediums as well but it doesn't stamp quite as dark and crisp as my favorite archival black ink. So I like to use the Misty for this also because then I can stamp it twice and get a really dark, crisp black impression. If you're not using alcohol markers, I do prefer the archival black. It's also waterproof, so you can use watercolors or other mediums, just not the alcohol markers. So we're gonna stamp that a second time right here and then i'm going to turn my paper around because i have room to get some more images here they won't quite all fit there a second time so i'm going to remove a couple of those images and then stamp the others again i also decided to stamp a couple of the chairs on the blue cardstock as well because i ended up liking the look of that better than on the white cardstock now I've got my swatch chart out that has the swatches for all of my Tribaland markers. This comes in super handy so many times. If you haven't swatched your markers, I highly recommend it. So I just chose the markers that I thought would work well with these cardstock colors and the colors in my layout. So I'm going to do a quick dry fitting before I color and cut out some of the other images. I've just cut the colored cardstock and sort of fitting where I want those to go and then I'll figure out the rest of the smaller pieces. But I wanted to make sure I knew where the trees and the mountains and that little tent were going. So we'll kind of scatter them around. I kind of liked the tent down there, but then because I had blue up at the top already, but I wasn't liking it with the proportion of the mountain because the tent is obviously not as tall as a mountain. <laughs> so I didn't end up leaving it down there. I played with it for a little bit and then I ended up leaving it up here. I kind of like how the top of the tent sort of tucks underneath that A. And so I'm going to end up leaving it there. But before I glue everything down, I'm going to do a little treatment to these colored pieces. So stay tuned for that. I like to use colored cardstock when I can to cut down on my coloring. So I was thinking I was going to remove this little burst here, like I mentioned, but that sucker was glued down really well. I don't remember what I used, but it wasn't budging. I could have colored it, but just decided to leave it and work around it. So I'm gonna add a little bit of shading to these mountains and the trees. So I've got the gray 
brown blend marker and I used the medium and the light shade from it and then I'm blending it out with the colorless blender and that kind of takes away some of the intensity and just leaves a little bit of a shadow. So these mountains are supposed to have sort of a like a snow capped look and even though there's no snow on these I liked the look of that but you can shade it however you want and then I'm just doing a similar treatment for the trees I have the dull green blend and also using just the medium shade and then the light shade to blend them out and you have to be careful on these because I didn't use the intense black ink so the alcohol markers could smudge the ink if you're not careful so I was trying to kind of work around those lines but now I'm blending it out with that light shade and then um, I think I did end up yep I ended up coming in and blending it even further with the colorless blender I just wanted a little bit of shading so there we go and I think that that made a big difference I'm going to hold it up with one that I haven't done yet just so you can see the difference doesn't that look good comparatively you could certainly leave it plain and just having the colored cardstock makes a big difference but i love that look and i colored all of the other images off camera because i really do very very simple coloring it's nothing special and i didn't want to take up the time in this video because it was already getting long even though i didn't even assemble the whole layout <laughs> so um, now i've got everything shaded and i'm putting it in place for real as i do that i think it's a good time to mention that if you're enjoying this video please be sure to hit the like button so youtube knows to show this video to more people and while you're at it be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any upcoming scrapbooking videos i post twice a week on tuesdays and fridays i like to mention the days because then that gives me a deadline and make sure that i actually do it <laughs> so um, anyways, I did end up coloring that tent as well, even though it was stamped on the blue. I did color the whole thing. I did a little bit more than just the shading I did on the mountains and the trees. That was a bit more than I was anticipating. Like I mentioned, I do very simple coloring, so um, I like the idea of just doing a little bit of shading. But those tri-blend markers really do take a lot of the guesswork out of coloring. So if you're not big on coloring like me, um, those tri-blend markers really are a great investment because they've got the three shades already built into them. All right, so I'm scattering all of my little pieces around. I'm tucking this second chair here because I thought I needed a little bit more blue. Right now I have two points of blue. I want three and even putting it right here it still is part of that one point so it's still just two but I wasn't liking the two chairs together because they were facing the same way and I didn't like it anywhere else because also it was facing the same way and then down there by the mountains it was just really out of um proportion to those mountains so I decided to instead do sort of a subtitle in blue and I think that will sort of solve the problem so there's this s'more word on the stamp set and then I'm going to pair it with love so it says s'more love and I just trimmed those out and I'm going to cover up where it says s'mores on the layout already because this is way cuter don't you agree they weren't popping quite enough, so I'm just very gently rubbing the edges in the sapphire ink, and then I'll place them down over that little tab, and I think that that looks really cute. You would never know that this layout was already done and that I'm just adding to it. Don't you think that these images just really enhance the layout and just add to the theme? I'm just so happy with it and so glad I did this. So this little die cut over here, it always bothered me because it says family time today, but the today was kind of die cut out. So it was white on white and really hard to see. So I just shaded it with the lightest gray marker. And then I also blended it out with the colorless blender so that it was just a nice subtle light gray. And I think that that pops a little bit more. The flashlight is laying on top of the chair and that's on purpose because I wanted to have it sort of like the light of the flashlight was shining on the family time today and then I'm going to do an extra little treatment on that as well in just a moment. 
So I've sped this up quite a bit because I'm just gluing things down, but I wanted to show you part of that process because these trees and mountains, a lot of them were hanging off the edge. And so I was sort of gluing them down, trimming some off, and then I used the leftovers that I trimmed off as well on this page on the other page. So that sort of little piece of a tree and piece of the mountain that I had left over are going to go up here on the far right of the layout. So we'll sort of have the look of two trees right there. And then I thought I was going to use all of those mountains down here, but I didn't think it needed it. And I liked the idea of drawing that gray up to this right corner or right side as well to make sure that that gray is flowing and balanced nicely across the layout. So again, we have it in the title, down on the bottom, and then pulled up to the right. And I think that really helps lead the eye around the page. So some of these things I'm gluing down flat onto the layout, and then some of them are popped up on foam. So you know the mountain, how there's that little piece that kind of tucks in underneath. So you're gonna see in just a moment, that piece is going to be on foam tape. I popped it up on foam tape on the one on the left as well. So it's sort of like popping up a little bit at the top, but then glued down flat at the bottom. And that gives a lot of nice dimension. I used thin 3D foam tape for this, by the way. It's thinner, not as dimensional as regular foam tape. And I like that for my scrapbook layouts because then it's not as much dimension on my page. So here's that little treatment I was talking about. I just took the lightest shade of the gold yellow blend and I'm kind of making it like a ray of the flashlight. And then again, taking the colorless blender and blending that out so that it, it was lighter. Once I was done with the layout, I decided to add a little shimmer brush to the moon, the bonfire and the lantern. It's really hard to catch on camera. I don't think I succeeded in catching that shimmer on camera, but if you have a shimmer brush, let me know in the comments and let others know how amazing it is on your layouts. It is everything. So I encourage you to pick one up if you don't have one already. Here are some close-ups of the layout. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you did find some inspiration in today's layout, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Here are a couple more videos to check out, and be sure to check the description box if you're interested in this stamp set or anything else I used in today's layout. Thanks so much for joining me today, and have a wonderful day.